Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, Mr. Pete 222, this time with Machine Shop Tips number 416 entitled 3D Printed Gears for the Atlas Lathe. Now I own two Atlas lathes and they are equipped with gears such as this that are made of Zamac. Now Zamac is a alloy, a zinc alloy, and you can see that these are die cast. I used to make fun of these, but they really are rather sturdy. I never have had one strip or fail. But Joe Hildreth, out of the great state of Tennessee, and several other people for that matter, had told me that on Thingiverse there is a, a series of gears such as this that can be printed out from uh, PLA or ABS or whatever you happen to have on your 3D printer. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today is, is print out some more of these. I already got a pile of them and I'm going to put them to a test on the lathe and see how they hold up. So let's get started. Zamek is an alloy that's been around for a long, long time, uh, certainly since the 30s and maybe before that. And it's a trademarked acronym for a zinc alloy that contains zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and copper, and kupfer is the German word for copper. There are many different alloys of Zamek. I'm not sure exactly what Atlas used, but if you look on the Atlas lathes, you'll see many other parts such as the cranks and the dial and so on are made of Zamek and really are quite sturdy. And I must say that it enabled Atlas to reduce the price of their gears and their lathes and make them very affordable and I think that's why there's more Atlas lathe around than any other single lathe as far as home duty type of lathes. Anything taken off of Thingiverse has to be given credit and this is the credit for the Atlas 10 change gears by Gadget 047 who was the creator so thank you Gadget. Alright I'm over at my Creality CR10 printer and remember this printer was given to me for Banggood to make videos so thank you to them but here's a close-up of the 3D printer printing a gear and it's being printed on a raft a raft is a support most of you know that if you do 3D printing and the filament that I'm using also from Banggood is uh, PLA if anyone's asking and I have not ever used ABS I understand it's much more difficult to print with but I'm sure the gears would be far stronger PLA is not a very strong plastic it's now two hours later and you can see how nicely this gear is progressing and it's at 20 percent but you can see how much fill there is in it or how little fill I think it's really neat how accurate these gears are being 3D printed Notice that the bore is already in there and the two keyways just as they are on the Zamac gear and this is a 40 tooth gear. As you can see die cast from the injection pin marks. And probably very little done to this after it came out of the die casting machine. It basically was ready to go, ready to use which greatly reduced the price compared to let's say uh, Logan gears or Monarch gears or South Bend or whatever that were made of cast iron or semi steel and had to be cut first cast and then cut probably hobbed for a high speed uh, production but looking at this now I think you know when you print something you can uh, print it as solid and this took nine hours to print one year. That's a, you know mushrooms grow much faster than that. But when we print on a 3D printer, 
we, I, you can print it out with uh, different fills. For instance, this one is only 20% fill. It's very lightweight. I think I'll put it on the scale to compare these two. Even though they look the same, they are not the same. So let me get the Toledo scale out. And now using the Toledo Honest Weight No Springs scale, let's first put the 20% on and it really feels lightweight. And that only weighs 13 grams, whereas the solid one weighs 33 grams. So you can see it's significantly heavier and took a lot longer to print. The 20% only took 3 hours and 20 minutes as opposed to, what did I say, 9 hours. Before I go any farther, I've had great success printing by printing the, the object on a, a raft. And of course the raft is thrown away. But I had better adhesion. Alright, that's a sidetrack. And then some of you may wonder, what are these little gears? Well, if we have a lot of viewers for this video. I mean, it's got to be a lot to be worth my while. I intend to make a threading dial for the Atlas or the Logan, but these would be the gears that would be used, this one specifically. And that also depends on whether or not these gears hold up in this uh, rather long experiment. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is take a solid gear, now this 24 tooth is 100% and here's the 40 tooth that is only 20%. I'm going to saw a cross section so you can see what they look like on the inside. I'll be right back. You know what? I really hope you people enjoy seeing this as much as I enjoy doing it. I just have a ball doing these experiments. And I probably would do them even if I wasn't making videos. Alright, here's the solid one and you know that's no amazing revelation when you look at it because when I said solid I meant solid so that's the way it is. It's 100% PLA and looking at the 20% one as you can see it is primarily hollow and I even took the liberty of sawing a tooth and there the tooth is hollow of course so there'll be very, very little strength. And really, we don't worry about the body so much. We need to care about the teeth. So let's see how these teeth break. And I know this will break very easily. It's 20%. They're probably as brittle as my own teeth, which have been breaking lately. All right, let me pinch this with the Bernard. Huh. That kind of surprises me. Oh, no, it did break off and then the pliers slipped off. I need a needle nose. Yes, a hollow tooth. Like my own. No strength at all. Didn't expect it to be. Now let's check out this 100%. And I do expect this to break. Wow, I am not able to break it. I'm really squeezing. Look at the handle flex. Kind of surprising me. Now at some point we know it's going to break. At some point these would break. Or an iron one. Alright, this is a compound player. You know it's going to break. Yeah, it did break. It took quite a bit. This encourages me. So the next step here is I'm going to go to the Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe, which you are well familiar with, and take off the 20 or the 40 tooth gear and install this. And then I'm going to run it. And I'm going to run it. Well, under load, that is, I'm going to cut metal and I'm going to take progressively deeper or faster cuts until 
one of these gives or doesn't give, but I certainly I expect it to fail at some point. What do you think? All right, over to the lathe. Well, here it is. The gears on the Atlas Craftsman 12-inch lathe. Zamek. A whole train of them. And this 40-toother here is the one that I'm going to take off and refit with a PLA 3D printed red gear. I make it a habit of unplugging a machine when I'm working on gears or some internal parts and I guess that's why I still got 10 fingers. Well there it is installed. I took the old one off and let's run it through its paces. Alright, of course that means nothing. So let me set the lathe up, keep the camera in this position, and start to take some cuts from light to heavy. Be back in a few minutes. Okay, for the first test, inch and a quarter stock, mild steel, 500 RPM, 4 thousandths feed, 20 thousandths deep, and I'm using oil. Okay, for number two, it's also a 4,000 speed, 500 RPM, and 30,000 deep. These are the chips from uh, the 30,000th feed. Now, for the next one, I should say 30,000th depth of cut. The next one is uh, also 4,000th feed and 40,000th depth of cut. It's also 4,000 speed, 50,000th depth of cut, and the material has been reduced to about one inch diameter now, but let's see what this does. By the way, that's my wife's table spoon. Here looks fine. Okay, I'm sick of pussyfooting around. I'm up to 700 rupums, you know who says that, and 5,000 feed, and also 50,000 depth of cut, but this material diameter is about down to one inch diameter now. Here we go. Okay, I stalled out the lathe, that is the cutter <laughs> stalled out and the belts are slipping. Okay, this is the last one I'm going to do. It's getting rather boring and tedious. Again, we're at 7 R 700 RPM. I slowed the feed back down to the original 4000s and it's a 50,000th depth of cut. And it's stalling out again. All right, I'm quitting. The belt slipped before the gear stripped. So I'm really pleased and surprised at how well the PLA printed uh, gear held up. This is what the setup looked like. And you can see this is the second to the last one that I did. 
how deep it was. And this is the final one where I stalled it out. And the tool is still in the stalled position. So that's how I went about filming this and testing the gears. I think that it's, well it's certainly not scientific, but it's interesting and I tried to control it. Well, I'm wrapping up the video. It ran longer than I thought it always does, and I want you to put in the comments what you think the results of this are. I'm leaving it up to you. Although I could not destroy that gear, even with the most aggressive cut, that even caused the lathe belts to slip. So that surprised the heck out of me. This being, again, the Zamac and this the plastic. Now, if the PLA held up that well, imagine how well ABS plastic, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, would hold up. Uh, I don't intend to do it, but perhaps there are some of you out there that will do that. And since these gears are apparently in short supply, other than paying a premium for them on eBay, this may be a a possibility for people out there. And, and again, I thank uh, Thingiverse and uh, this man here, Gadget 047, for what he did. And you know what? He's got the whole series of gears. I don't know how many are on Thingiverse, but it's certainly more than the one or two that I printed out. So uh, I hope you found this as interesting as what I did. And with that in mind, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you, I hope in my next video.